For all you folks at home, thanks so much for taking some time to be with Jesus tonight, wherever you are, in front of your phone or computer or tablet or your TV. Your friends, it's an opportunity for us to be with the Lord in a very real way. But as we've been having these beautiful times of prayer together throughout these weeks, the Lord's been inspiring me just to share stories with you. And for when you're struggling with the, with the Lord or when you're struggling with life or sickness or being trapped in your home for who knows how many years, you don't even know the day of the week, you look at your children and you say, are you still here? No matter the affliction or suffering, one of the gifts the Lord has given to us is to remember the Lord's faithfulness, to remember what the Lord has done for us. So whatever trial or tribulation afflicts you right now, the Lord has helped you get through other trials and tribulations. And you have to remember his faithfulness because he's helping you get it through, get through this one right now. And it's almost over. So tonight I want to share with you another story, but first I want to read one of my favorite scripture stories. This is from Genesis 22. I'm reading this out of this Bible. So this Bible, my mom gave this Bible to my dad the Christmas after I was born in 1978. I had red curly hair then. I know it's hard to believe. So Genesis 22. Sometime after these events, God put Abraham to the test. He called to him, Abraham. Ready, he replied. Then God said, Take your son Isaac, your only one whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah. There you shall offer him up as a holocaust on a height that I will point out to you. Early the next morning, Abraham saddled his donkey, took his son Isaac and two of his servants as well, and with the wood that he had placed and cut for the holocaust, set out for the place of which God had told him. On the third day after Abraham got sight of the place from afar, then he said to his servant, Both of you stay here with the donkey, while the boy and I go on over yonder. We will worship and then come back to you. Thereupon Abraham took the wood for the holocaust and laid it on his son Isaac's shoulders, while he himself carried the fire and the knife. As the two walked on together, Isaac spoke up to his father Abraham. Father, he said, Yes, son, he replied. Isaac continued, Here are the fire and the wood, but where is the sheep for the holocaust? Son, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the holocaust. Then the two continued going for forward. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. Next, he tied up his son Isaac and put him on the top of the wood of the altar. Then he reached out and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the Lord's messenger came to him from heaven. Abraham, Abraham. Yes, Lord, he answered. Do not lay a hand on the boy, said the messenger. Do not do the least thing to him. I know now how devoted you are to God, since you did not withhold from me your own beloved son. As Abraham looked about, he spied a ram caught by his horns in the thicket. So he went, took the ram, and offered it up as a holocaust in the place of his son. Abraham named the place Yahweh Yira. Hence people now say, on the mountain, the Lord will see. Again, the Lord's messenger called to Abraham from heaven and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that you acted as you did in not withholding from me your beloved son. I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Your descendants shall take possession of the gates of their enemies and in your descendants, all the nations of the earth shall find blessing. All this because you obeyed my commandment. Abraham then returned 
to his servants, and they set out together for Beersheba, where Abraham made his home. So one thing that you may or may not know about me is I am dyslexic. From the time I was a little boy, words have always perplexed me. It took me a long time to learn how to read. In fact, in second grade, I pretended to know how to read because I sat last in line when everyone read the same sentence over and over again. But at the end of second grade year, Sister Lucille finally found out, and it took me another year to learn how to read, but I've always struggled. And even when I was just reading this tonight, I got some of the words in the wrong order and in the wrong place. But you probably didn't even realize. One of the great blessings and crosses of my life was the opportunity to live in Rome for a long time. And in Rome, I had the opportunity to study at the premier school in all of the world to study God, which seems really cool, except for one thing. All day, every day, all the classes are in Italian, and I didn't speak any Italian. I didn't have any money for tutors. There wasn't any help. And so I found myself going to this prestigious place, not being able to communicate with the classmates around me, not really knowing what the teacher was saying. Sometimes they would say things like this, Jesu Cristo e Filio di Dio. And I'd be like, Jesus Christ, something, something God. Which may be impressive, but that was after six months. So throughout that first year of studies, it was a great suffering. I studied every day, tried to figure out the Italian. I asked the other men for help. I wasn't able to make friends amongst the hundred other students in class because every time they were asking me to drink a coffee, I don't know, I thought they wanted to borrow money. It was then into my second year there and I was desperate. I thought I'm never never getting out of here. I'm never going to graduate. I'm never going to be a priest. I think that's what the Lord Jesus wants me to do. I'm doomed. And so one day in class, I just couldn't take it anymore. I thought my brain was going to explode and my inability just crushed me. And so I left. And even though I was a grown man, I was crying. And I'm walking through the streets of Rome and there, not far from the university, is a church called Dodici Apostoli, Twelve Apostles. And I went into this church, and if you've been to Europe, you know that often the churches are pitch black when you walk in. And the one consolation I had when I was trying to learn at this school was my friend Maximilian Colby went to school there. So often I would think of St. Max and think, help me out, man. And on this day, as I walked into this completely black church, I thought again about my friend Maximilian Colby, and I thought, I'm never going to make it. Then I thought of another saint, my brother's favorite saint, St. Joseph Cupertino. He could fly, for real. St. Joseph Cupertino couldn't learn either. That's why he's the patron saint of students. So I'm in this pitch black church, crying like a real wimpy, grown man because I was gonna to have to leave and fail God. And I found myself to a side altar that was pitch black and thinking of my friend St. Max and Joseph Cupertino saying, guys, I'm gonna have to go home. Can't do it. And if you've ever been to the churches in Europe in this black darkness, because the Italians are quite clever, the lights will turn on if you put money into a machine. So as I find myself kneeling in a completely dark side altar, no idea where I am, thinking of St. Max and Joseph Cupertino, a random tourist came by the corner of my eye, and they, plink, dropped a euro into the little box, and the lights turned on. And when the lights turned on, I'd never been here before where I found myself. When the lights turned on, the altar was dedicated to St. Joseph Cupertino. And the painting was of him flying while celebrating Mass. And I couldn't believe it. 
And then I turned to the side, and on the side of the altar was a bronze bust, a face, and it said, here St. Maximilian Kolbe used to come and pray. In my situation that seemed completely impossible, calling out to my only friends, the Lord showed up. Not because of me, but because the Lord is good. And so the rest of my years there were still very hard. By the grace of God, I received the gift of Italian and got some degrees and was able to do beautiful things. But I knew that the Lord was with me the rest of that time and that somehow, impossible and as hard as it was going to be every single day, God would get me through. And here we are now on the space page all these years later. Dear friends, Abraham's situation was impossible. But Abraham never gave up his faith in God. Abraham was told that you would have a son, and from the son would come the whole world. But they don't have the son until he's about a hundred. And then God says, take this only son and sacrifice him. Why are the, all the trials? Why are all the tribulations? Why does it seem sometimes like God doesn't like us because life is so terrible and difficult and heavy? I don't know. But many times when Jesus healed the sick and the lame. He said, this sickness is to reveal the glory of God. And so my inability to learn, my dyslexia, Abraham's situation where you find yourself right now, it is to manifest the glory of God somehow. I don't know how, but God knows. And Abraham believed in God, even though what God asked him was impossible. And so that's why Abraham said to his servant, we will return and when Isaac asks his father, where's the lamb of sacrifice? It says in Latin, Deus provo debit anus Dei. God himself, of himself, will provide the lamb of sacrifice. But Abraham knew that what God asked was impossible. But Abraham already lived in an impossible life. He was a hundred. He just climbed a mountain and he had a son. He knew that God himself would provide the lamb somehow. Abraham and Isaac walked off Mount Moriah that day. That boy carried the wood upon his shoulders like a cross. And many, many, many centuries later, Jesus, the only Son of God, walked up that same mountain Moriah with the wood now upon his shoulders. And our Father sacrificing his Son and our Jesus willingly accepting the cross because Jesus himself is the lamb of sacrifice. So dear friends, it's only when we're busted up, broken, it's only when life is impossible, it's only when all of our ingenuity has dried up that God shows up. Not because he's mean or not because he's cruel, but as he says throughout the scriptures, so that all may know that not by the hand of man, but by the hand of God has this been done. And so at home, your survival throughout these 10 weeks, whatever you've endured is for God's glory, and it is by the hand of God that there's been the opportunity for you, not of your own strength or your ability, to be saved and to still watch this 10 weeks later through your little phone. But if you still have your faith, it's by the grace of God. And so I don't know what your busted up brokenness is. I don't know about the parts in your life that seem impossible. It seems like what God asks you can't be done. But if it is the Lord's will, all things are possible. Abraham and Isaac did return. I somehow became a priest, now famous on the intraweb, Spacebook. Dear friends, God's never done with us. So don't give up on him, even if it seems impossible. Thanks so much for joining Jesus tonight as we pray. He's looking so forward to seeing you face to face soon in this and many other churches.
Savior, I come, quiet my soul. Remember, Redemption's Hill, where your blood was spilled for my ransom. Everything I once held dear, I count it all as lost. Lead me to the cross where your love poured out. Bring me to my knees, Lord, I lay me down. Rid me of myself, I belong to you. Lord, lead
Oh 
Lord Jesus Christ, you have given the Eucharist as the memorial of your suffering and death. May our worship of the sacrament of your body and blood help us to experience the salvation which you won for us and the peace of the kingdom where you live with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. by our Lord Jesus, in particular way to give to him whatever impossible thing or hopeless thing or dark place you find yourself, that he may give you strength and light and provide for your needs. the divine praises. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed, Blessed be Jesus Christ, Christ true God, God and true man. man. Blessed, Blessed be Jesus Christ. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the paraclete. Blessed be the great mother of God. Mary most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God and his angels and in his saints.